Today I want to talk a bit about resilience and about the way we spin things to support people in, in their own development. So I'm going to look at two examples, uh, personal examples, one of which goes back quite a while now to me getting my black belt, my first and black belt in, in Taekwondo. We were asked as a class by Master Wolf, um, you know, who in the class, it's a question that the um, leaders in Taekwondo often, often ask us, who is going to get a black belt? And I didn't put up my hand. I would have been a, I don't know, about a blue belt, I was about halfway-ish at the time. And at the end, Master Wolf came up to me and he said, why didn't you put your hand up? And I'm like, well, you know, um, I'm not the fittest person here. I'm certainly not the youngest. Um, <laughs> And I just, you know, I'm, I'm doing this to support my kids and, you know, it's not, I don't actually see that, you know, I've never been good at sport, and excuse, excuse, excuse. And he just simply said, there's no reason for you not to get a black belt, you will get it. Um, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not exactly in that, excuse, excuse, excuse. And he was like, but you work hard, you can do this. And that belief that belief in me that I could do this was like, well, you know, he, 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 he couldn't think of a single barrier to me getting that black belt. And having somebody outside believe that I could do this really boosted my drive to do it and my self-belief. And I worked with my son and we worked together and, and we did. We, we got our first hands and our second hands at the same time. If he'd have allowed my doubts to take root, if he'd allowed, if he'd even accepted a tiny bit of my doubt, then that doubt would have magnified. But that total confidence of you can do this made a difference. I am not a natural in terms of the physical. One look at me would, would make that pretty obvious. I was in my 40s when I got my um, first stand. Um I was 50 when I got my second down. So, you know, these are not, you can see where I might have been a bit, oh, I don't know if I can. But having that belief, that belief from somebody else helped develop my self-belief. Um, and I may not be the best. They've said before, I'm not going, you know, you may not be a world champion or whatever. I've won medals in competitions, but I'm not going to be top of the pile. But it doesn't matter, I can teach. I'm useful to the club because I can support them and I can give other people that confidence and they said the fact that I'm not a natural actually has helped with my teaching because I've had to break everything down. How did I do that? How did I get my foot at that position? What is the position that my foot needed? How did I go from this movement to that movement? And it means because I've had to analyse myself, I can help develop others. The same is true in my teaching. Um, I'm dyslexic, as if you've seen previous blogs, you'll be well aware. And my own dyslexia means that I have got so many strategies to support others, um, to help me to support myself, and that's enabled me to support others because I think, well, I do that, that helps. If yeah, when I'm doing, oh, that's difficult for me, so I do. And the different strategies help. Now, self-doubt has been a big part of me academically. Um, and as you may know, if you've been following me in different ways, I'm doing a doctorate. Now, I had my assessment for my dyslexia in order to cope with the viva. I got through the viva, um, I could answer questions, but I had serious rewriting to do in order to resubmit the entire thesis because a lot of what was said in the, um, the viva was not on page was not on paper at all. I thought it was, but what's in my mind and what's on the page get a bit sort of mixed up and blurred. So huge rewriting to do. Had a year to do it. I then got a letter back in December that said, Congratulations. It then went on to say I had corrections to do. The congratulations really built me oh wow if I passed. No. <laughs> I have and I haven't sort of Yes, you know, provided you do this, your thesis will have passed, you'll get your doctorate. My first thought was to be downhearted because 
I saw the congratulations and then that you've got to do and it was here we go again can I summon up the energy to do any more and this is where resilience comes in but also the spin so my supervisor emailed me with a really supportive email to say look you've got this all you now need to do is address these specific points and you've got it you've done the hard bit they've accepted your basic thesis they just want you to modify it so I gave it some thought I got started on the the work well no I didn't actually I, I, I gave it more thought then I had a meeting with my supervisor and we worked out my next steps broke it down chunked it small steps I started working on those steps and then I got an email saying oh there's a conference coming up a, a well-being scholarship day would you do a poster for it a poster on this new model that you've developed for your thesis so part of me was like more work really do I want to do this but the other part was like she's never steered me wrong before she's got I've got faith in her you know she's, she's got faith in me she made it sound positive I'll give it a go so I produced a poster now part of producing the poster for this scholarship day meant that people came up and asked me questions as they asked me questions I realized the bits firstly doing the poster backtrack a bit meant that I produced my model which had been a sort of this box this box and this box was suddenly in diagrammatic form as opposed to ta tabular form it wasn't a table anymore it was a diagram and that made it visual and suddenly it was beginning to become concrete in my mind what I needed to do when people started asking me questions I realized I'd done this circular diagram but I hadn't looked at how the different four strands related to each other and the careful questioning they gave me meant that I went home and I was like right I've got to do this so two things had happened independently. One, I'd, I'd created this model, but instead of going through and doing the corrections as my supervisor had advised, I thought, oh, I need a rationale for this model. And I'd, I'd gone independently and started doing this work. Then I produced this, this poster, and again, it raised questions. So I went home and I reworked it. I thought it through, and I thought, oh, no, actually, I need to add an arrow here, an arrow there, one there and there, that... And, and suddenly it became really, really concrete in my head and I knew where I was going. So I had another meeting with my supervisor. And in that meeting, three things had happened by then. I had done a rationale that I hadn't been told to do, but I realised for myself independently I needed to do. I'd done a poster and remodelled that poster and remodelled my model until it was clarified in my mind. I'd also analysed um, and adjusted a cr and done my corrections for a chapter that hadn't yet been asked for. So a lot more independent work. When it came to the meeting, I'm chatting through what I've done, what I've achieved, and where I'm going. And at the end of the meeting, my supervisor looked at me and said, Ooh, look at you all confident. And that's like a, a magic moment. It made me realise that I needed that extra time to do these corrections because before doing those corrections I wasn't worthy of being a doctor and I'm not saying that under false modesty my thinking wasn't that of somebody who has a doctorate it was of somebody who's always saying oh sh should I do oh, I'm, I'm not sure I, can you tell me what to do next suddenly I'm someone who is saying I need to do this, I need to do that. I'm not saying I've got it right, I've got loads that I need to do. But I'm doing it because I'm seeing what needs to be done. I'm now entering that mindset of somebody who has a doctorate. And if I, please God, get this doctorate at the end of this re reworking corrections, I will actually feel I've not only worked for it, but I've changed enough to be worthy of it. Now that comes from people believing in me, people putting a positive spin on what I'm doing. Instead of me being downhearted, I can't, I can't, I can't, they're like, look what you've achieved, you've done this, you now only need to do this, you can. And if something is presented in a way that makes you realise that 
you benefit from revisiting, you benefit from doing that work again, you benefit from addressing those corrections and you grow from it as opposed to you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're damned, you're damned, you're damned. You can build this positive attitude and it can change your mindset. Not being afraid to get it wrong. Realising when you've made a mistake, you learn from that, you develop, you come forward stronger and better is what is so important. So how we spin it, if somebody at Taekwondo isn't ready to take a grading, we can either say, oh, you're just not good enough. Or we can say, oh, you can do this now, you can do this now. If you work on this, you'll be even better. Isn't it worth waiting a month and then really getting it right and then you'll be so proud of what you've achieved. Putting that positive spin, whether it be in Taekwondo, whether it be in the classroom, whether it be doing a doctorate, that positive spin, building up someone's resilience is worth so much in the end because you can then really be the best you can be. We need to believe in our students, we need to give them that positive spin and build their resilience so they can move forwards and develop to be who they really are and achieve what they are actually able to achieve.